Welcome to the world of face painting. This video is for total beginners. It was made by a professional face painter. That would be me, Lilia. I started face painting in 2012 and am now working as a full-time children's entertainer doing face painting as well as balloon twisting. This video covers what supplies you need for your first face painting project, where to buy them and what to avoid. There is a lot of false information out there that can cause serious health problems. So please bear with me when I also go through three warnings so that you only spread happiness and joy. I'll show you the four beginner face paint supplies you need and five household items. Give my three warnings and make one disclaimer. The disclaimer is that this video is not advice for people who want to start face painting as a business or paint a lot of people in public. There is a lot more you need to know and some things you need to do differently. So this video is for you if you just want to have some fun at home. If you want help with face painting as a business, you can subscribe to the channel for more instructional videos and consider getting my free newsletter. The link is in the description box below this video. Let's go through the supplies you need to get started with face painting. Face paint is the most expensive item. The rest is either very cheap or you might already have it at home. You'll want to get a palette with water activated pots of face paint like this one. Sometimes the pots inside are rectangular, sometimes they're circular. Face paint has to be skin safe. This may sound silly, but make sure it actually says face paint on the package to avoid tricksters. Don't get any crayons, creams, grease paint, alcohol-based paint, powders. They have their own space, but for most beginner face painting designs, they are impractical. Use only water-activated face paint. And here comes warning number one, please, Promise me one thing, no matter how short of money you are or how short of time you are, please don't ever use acrylic paints or watercolors or anything of that sort. They are craft supplies. They're not made for the use on skin. Face paint may look very similar, but face paint is actually makeup and that's a big difference. I hear that a lot. Acrylic paints are labeled as non-toxic, so they're fine. Nope. That only means that you won't die if you eat them. When applied to skin, especially the delicate facial skin, they can cause rashes, burns, allergies, nothing you'd want. It's not worth saving the money or a trip to the store. Please don't let anybody else push you to use acrylics. So, which face paint brand should you get? A lot of people start out with the brand Snazaru. I've never tried it myself. I heard the coverage isn't that great, but it's safe for the skin and available in a lot of shops in Western countries like the US. If you're living in Germany, an alternative option is Eulenspiegel. That's what I started with. It wasn't optimal, but fine to start with. If you want to have a better result and can afford to spend a little bit more money, choose a more professional brand like Silly Farm, Superstar, Diamond FX, PXP Professional Colors, Check the description box below for a list. You'll have way more fun with professional face paints. They're safe to use on skin, last long, have really, really great coverage, and they're easy to remove. Super cheap face paint you get in the Halloween section of your craft store on their removal can become the horror part of Halloween. Which face paint kit should you get? If you want to use face paint for just one occasion and already have a design in mind, get a tiny, tiny palette with the colors you need for that. If you want to have more options to explore this new hobby, get a simple small palette with six or I even suggest 12 colors. With something like this, you'll have a lot of options for your designs. The pots look small, right? But they really go a long way for personal use. So stay away from big cakes like these. You'll never get through them before they expire. In my opinion, you should have white and black, green, red, blue and yellow, orange, brown, pink and purple, Maybe gray, but sadly often gray is not included. When you're starting out, I advise you to avoid having to mix colors. So your child will most likely lose patience and run off again before you even have a chance to start painting. And it's messy. But then of course, mixing can save some money. So you decide what's best for you. There are also these fun split cakes with more than one color in each container. But as a total beginner, I'd say just get a regular palette and see if you actually like face painting first. Split cakes are what I almost exclusively use on the job these days, but the costs add up quickly and I don't want you to invest into something you might not even enjoy. So 
Skip them for now, I'll cover them in later videos though. Where to buy face paint? Here comes warning number two. Please don't buy ridiculously cheap face paint on Amazon or worse, Timu or anything like this. There are ugly reasons why they're so cheap there. The paints are not necessarily safe for the skin, may be terrible to remove, and you never know how old the paint is, how it was produced, and how it was stored. Even if you don't care about wages, which is a completely different topic, please don't take any risks when it comes to health. Yes, there are some legitimate face painting shops that have an Amazon store as well, but honestly, who has the time to do research if it's the real one? The brand Snazaru might be available in craft shops around you. I heard in the US they are available at Michael's. For professional face paint, if you live close to an actual face painting shop, you are one lucky person. <laughs> Most of us will have to shop online. I've listed some trusted professional face painting online shops for you in the description box below as well. In those stores, that is also where you can find the rest of the supplies, like glitter. Some people say glitter is optional. I don't think so, but that's your decision to make. If you want to use glitter, get some iridescent fine cosmetic glitter. It looks like, wait, yeah, looks like this. There's basically no need to get different colors starting out. Just get this one. The glitter has to be very important for cosmetic use and be skin safe. Make sure to read what it actually says on the product or on the website, because here's my warning number three. If you love your child, don't use craft glitter. <laughs> I know it looks the same. I thought so too, and I have used it when I started out working for another face painter and using their supplies and I had no clue. Craft glitter can contain sharp metal parts that can cause damage to the skin and eyes. And that's not all. There's also cosmetic grade glitter for fingernails, so check the label carefully. Cosmetic grade for use on skin. And if it doesn't say anything at all, it's most likely craft glitter, so stay away from that. There are some brands now that sell biodegradable face painting glitter too, which I find really awesome. They are a bit more costly though. Glitter generally comes in different containers. Just get a simple container like this, or sometimes they also come in a proofer bottle, whatever you prefer. Now, for many designs, you also need a sponge to apply a base for a large area and for blending colors. Ideally, you get a circular face paint sponge like this. They are soft and porous. Take a pair of scissors and cut them in half. Live action here. <laughs> and now you should have a flat surface to work with and a round surface to work with. A regular makeup sponge would not work well. They are very dense and don't hold much paint and they might smear. But you can use a clean and soft bath sponge for babies too. Next are brushes. You might already have some at home or find some in your local craft store. There are a lot of shapes and sizes, don't get them all. You can do simple designs like this one with just one round brush. If you want, you can get two different sizes or maybe a flat brush as well to cover larger areas but really don't worry about it too much. Make sure that they are pointy, like this one, not like this, <laughs> and do the test if they spring back quickly. They should be quite soft and spring back into shape. Please make sure that they're clean. Don't use any nasty old rusty brushes that still have acrylic paint on them. I know that you are a very tidy and responsible person, but I've seen a lot online, so I just wanted to mention that. Unfortunately, every brand has its own brush sizes, but I've listed a few ones I like in the description box below for you. If you're a fan of good quality brushes, a lot of face painters love this particular brush. It was called a Low Cornell Gold Grip Brown Brush number six, four, I don't really know. You'll see it in a lot of old tutorials on YouTube and I quite like them too. Even though I'll never get over the fact that these actually aren't gold but yellow. Don't do that to me. Nowadays, they are called uh, King Art White Nylon Round Brushes. Some people claim they aren't the same, but I didn't feel any difference. And I also don't think there's something like the perfect brush. So again, don't worry. Lastly, there are five household items you need for your first face painting session as well. A cup of drinking water, a towel, just in case Q-tips or baby wipes. I like using plastic free options. Only if you have a spray bottle filled with drinking water and a mirror of some sort. 
When you're ready for your first face painting session, head over to this video.